Hello people, I am Bharat Acharya. Welcome to a new video. So in today's video, we are going to learn about this DOS Interrupt INT21H. If you have uh, programs in college, if you do programming, if you have practical exam, you better know this interrupt because you need this interrupt for practically everything that you do in a program. Now INT21H is a multi-purpose interrupt. Okay, understand what I am saying. That same instruction, INT21H, can do a variety of operations. There are numerous activities that it does. You don't really need to know all of them, at least as a student point of view, but you need to know a few of them. So the ones that are used regularly are to input a character. Like in a C program, when you type C in, what happens in that command C in? Suppose you write C in and X, and when you execute that line, the cursor is blinking and whatever the user enters comes into that variable X. Similarly, to input a character from the user, if you want the user to enter numbers for you, like write a program to add two numbers, but the numbers should be taken in from the user. You need to use int21. Now, int21 can also be used to input a whole string. Instead of just taking a single value, a whole string. Now, this is typically useful in palindrome program. Many people who do 8086 programming come across this program called palindrome in Bombay University. It's super popular. Okay, one of the most frequently asked programs. Now, palindrome program, you know what's a palindrome, right? They'll give you a string. Uh, you got to see forward, reverse, whether the string is the same or not. Sometimes, when the examiner is uh, lenient or if they, you just are a lucky day, the a string will be hard coded and given in the question. Write a program to determine whether this string is a palindrome. But generally that's not the case. Generally they want you to accept the string from the user at in the practicals, not in the theory paper. Theory paper, of course, the string is given. Practicals is a different ball game altogether. So you want the user to enter the whole string and you want to capture, store the string and then work on it. So whether you want to input a single character or you want to input a string, both cases you use INT21. Similarly, to display a character and to display a string. Again, you added two numbers, now you want to display the result. The result is a value that you want to send out on the screen. So for that, you use int21. That, that is a single value. That For that, we use the function display a character. Suppose you want to display a string. The question is, write a program to invert a string or arrange a string in ascending order or something of that sort. So they'll give you a random order string. You arrange it in ascending order. Now you want to display the whole string. To display a single character or to display a string, both cases, again, you use int21. Lastly, the, and there are many more uses. These are typically used by engineering students. That's why I'm covering them. So to terminate the program, the termination code of a program, you would have seen this. Every program ends with this particular code. So for that also use int21. So you come out of that DOS system, come back into the system that you are in anyway. So my point is, there are so many functions of int21. Which function do you want to use? How do you decide that? You're writing int21 in every case. Yep. The value that you put in AH before invoking int21. Can you see? I have left that blank. Can you see? Something else will come in each case. So depending upon the value that you put in AH, that acts as a parameter. If you know what's the meaning of passing parameters to functions, so that acts as a parameter. So depending upon the value that you put in AH and invoke int21, int21 will show you the appropriate behavior. Is that clear? So that's what I'm going to teach you in this video, how to do all of this. Not just the correct values. Values are nothing. You just do a Google search, you'll get the values. But how do these work? and what happens, how, what is the relation of all of this with ASCII values. Uh, you know this, when a user enters 5, you don't get 5, you get 35, the ASCII code. So how do you, what do you do with it, etc, etc, is what I'm going to teach you in the video. Now, okay, so we begin with the first function of int21, uh, to input a single character. What does that mean? To input one single keystroke on the keyboard. A single key press on the keyboard is called a character. So to take that from the screen, you use move as comma zero one. Remember I told you every time the number over here will change. That number will decide which function of int21 you will use. So move as comma zero one, the very first function because it's the most basic thing to do to input a character. When you like this along with int21, when you execute, there will be a cursor blinking on the screen. Whatever the user types will be taken from the screen and given to you in your program in a L register. That means after executing this new line, you're supposed to check. Here. Now get this key. What will you get in here? The key that is pressed is ASCII value. ASCII, ASCII, however you want to pronounce it. You know that, right? Every key on the keyboard has an ASCII value. So what the keyboard will return for you is the ASCII value of the key. So if the user has pressed 5, you will not get 5. You will get 35. The ASCII values of 0 to 9 are 30 to 39 and then A to F 
are 40, 41 sorry, to 46, okay. So what will happen is when the user enters 5, you will get 35. From that you are supposed to subtract 30. There are two ways of doing it, either mask the higher nibble or simple just subtract 30. If the value is from A to F, that means you have to subtract 37. When you do F, so if you do 46 minus 37, you end up getting F. So the catch is, first you check whether the value is up to 39 or not. If it is up to 39, subtract 30. If it is more than 39, then subtract 37, because then it will be 41 to 46, provided the user has entered a valid input. Yeah, if the user enters some rubbish like Z or something, then you will get a rubbish value. So you are supposed to tell the user, of course, that enter numbers in this range, etc. Assuming normal inputs. Now, my point is, Suppose you want to uh, write a program to add two numbers, okay, that's the question, two 8-bit numbers, take inputs from the user. So the first 8-bit number, let's say the user enters is 25, what are you going to get? You're not going to get 25, for 2 you will get 32, for 5 you will get 35, you understand that? So from both you will subtract 30, so what are you going to get? 0, 2 and 0, 5, listen very quick, carefully, user has entered 25, what you have got is 32 and 35, subtract 30 from both, you will get 0, 2 and 0, 5, you are still not done, rotate this number 4 times, you remember rotate instruction, when you rotate an 8-bit number 4 times, the lower nibble and higher nibble gets interchanged, so this will become 2, 0, to that you add the number 5, that's when you will get 25, please tell me, did you understand this, students say, sir, theory exam program is this small in practicals the program is of two pages why is the program so big the program is so big because a lot of effort is required to take and inputs from the user this was the effort for an 8 bit number you understand if it's a 16 bit number it will be double of this you understand that right uh, 16 bit number 1 2 3 4 you'll get 31 32 33 34 do this whole thing for the lower byte whole thing for the higher byte then combine the two to get 1 2 3 4 so that effort makes the program much bigger in size it's not only required during inputs it's also required during outputs when i come to output i'll tell you but anyways did you understand how to take a single number from the user first you do move as comma zero one int 21 at check out al register al will get the ascii value compare it with 39 if it's up to 39 subtract 30 if it's more than 39 subtract 37 because that means it's an alphabet so you'll get 41 to 46 so subtract 37 when you do that you'll get the alphabet now if you get taking an 8-bit value you'll do this twice then the higher part you'll rotate four times and then add it to the lower one that's when you'll get your 8-bit number this is how you accept a single input from the user now the next one to input a string palindrome program user will enter the string you have to check whether it's a palindrome or not so when the user enters a single character you're getting one number so you get it in al register when the user enters a whole string a string is a set of characters, so you can't get it in one register. So first you have to define a string. Please check out my video on programming, the first video that I have made where I have explained all the assembler directives. Please check that out. In that I have explained how to create variables, what is data segment, etc. So what you need to do is create an array, any array, any name that you want to. Let's say an array by the name string, string db09h dup question mark i have created an array what is an array a large variable containing various values so i have created an array with the name string db means the array contains bytes defined bytes that's the data type 09 is the size of the array so there are nine elements in the array dup is duplicate what do you want the array to contain question mark one question mark means garbage so what has happened is in the memory there is an array created by the name string it has nine elements and they all contain garbage values are you clear now what have you done you have created space to accept the input from the user now when you want to do int 21 to input the string you want that the user's input string comes and gets stored into the array now that will not happen by magic yeah the code for performing the function of inputting a whole string is move a h comma 0 a like to input a character you write 0 1 to input a string you write 0 a but that's not done there is one more thing you need to do user will enter a string processor is going to give you a whole string where will that string be stored it can't be stored in al register al is just one register this is a whole string so you have created the string you just need dx to point to the string i repeat you need dx to point to the string you write the instruction lea lea stands for load effective address say again 
load effective address effective address is just another word for offset address load the offset address of string into dx so that now when you write int21 user will enter a whole string followed by the enter key whatever the string the user has entered will be stored in this array by the name string because dx is pointing to it so i'll tell you the steps once again you want to accept a whole string from the user first make space for it by declaring a variable an array by any name that you want to have given the name string db whatever size you expect the user to enter or if you want the user to finish off with a dollar sign or something that's advanced programming that's later assuming you know the size so keeping a size is 9 dup means what do you want the array to contain we want it to contain garbage why because the user is going to enter so you're just creating the space for it so you've created a string by the name string now make dx point to it by writing LEA DX comma string. So DX is now a pointer ready over here to accept the string. Move AH comma 01 INT 21 will make the user will stop the screen, will keep the cursor over there. User will keep entering 5, 6, 7, 2, 4, etc. These are the alphabets or these are the characters of your palindrome, whatever the user wants to enter. When the user hits enter, the operation is over. That whole thing will be captured and will be stored in this entire section called string. Please tell me, did you understand this? Yes? So to input a single character you use 0, 01, to input a string you use 0A, single character comes in AL, string will come wherever DX is pointing. If you want the string to be stored at location 4000, you don't need to do this, move DX comma 4000. Basically DX should contain the offset address where the string is supposed to point. That is the idea. Please tell me, are you clear? Now, this is input character, input string. Now, the reverse of it, to display a character and to display a string. To display a character, move AH comma 0, 02. Put the character in DL and write INT21. Of course, when I say put the character, you're not going to put 5. If you want to display 5, you won't put 5. You put the ASCII code of 5. That means what do you do? You add 30 to it. So again, you check the number. Whether it's 0 to 9, then you'll add 30. If it is more than, then, more than 9, you'll add 37. Basically, you have to give out the ASCII value. So move age comma 0 to move DL comma character INT21 will display that character on the screen. Again, you know. In C programming, when you want to display something on the screen, it's a good habit to do that N slash N. You know that, right? What does that do? It starts it on the next line. So starting on the next line has two ASCII values to do it, N and 13. Going to the next line, the enter key basically has two components in the ASCII system. I'm just going outside, outside this and teaching you something else. That's called carriage return and line feed. I repeat, carriage return and line feed. Carriage return means get the cursor back to the home position. Carriage is another name for the cursor. So carriage return will get it back to the home position. And line feed means next line, home position of the next line. That's how, that is why in many keyboard, the enter key has this symbol. This symbol means you are coming back to the home and you're going to the next line. So it's a combi, that enter key is a combination of two keys, carriage return and line feed. Anyway, so that carriage return line feed is 10 and 13. You will also notice some people doing 0A and 0D in uh, while displaying a string or while displaying anything on the screen. What is 0A and 0D? 10 and 13. So you can write it as 10, 13 in decimal system or you can write 0A, 0D in hexadecimal. You may skip it. If you don't do it, no problem. Wherever the cursor works, the output will go there. But if you do 10, 13, it's more graceful. It will come in the first, in the first on the home side, that means the first alphabet of the next line. So it just looks more graceful. So just thought you should know it. Anyway, so that's just presentation. So that is to display a single character. Now to display a string, what do you mean by displaying a string? You want the user to enter numbers. For that you have to ask the user, no? Correct? Uh, you first will write, display a message, please enter the first number or please enter the string to be converted or whatever, whatever, whatever. So you want to display a message. So define a message. Message db hello world. Finally, we are doing hello world program in assembly. Message db hello world. You can do single quotes, double quotes, doesn't matter. So when you do this, assembler has created an array by the name message and stored it in the memory containing ASCII values of hello world. I repeat, containing ASCII values of hello world. This message is already now stored in the memory. All this is to be done in the data segment. I repeat, in which segment? Data segment. And the program is written in the code segment. You know the logic of programming, right? Data segment contains all the data, code segment contains the program. Now, so define your message like hello world or please enter the first number or it was fun working with you or whatever message you want to type. So enter that message, store it as a variable by the name message, variable array, whatever you want to call it. 
move dx comma that message so instead of string it will be message if you want to output the string that the input had given you can use the same anyway so move dx comma message move ah comma 09 the code for displaying a message is 09 move ah comma 09 move dx comma message what will it do this will display hello world on the screen if you put n and 13 over here that is 0 d and 0 a and 0 d it will come on the next line at the home position so it will be a more graceful way if you don't do it it will come randomly wherever the cursor's last position was so these are the four things people need to do in practicals to take an input to input a single character input a whole string display a single character display a whole string one minute recap if you input a single character where does it come al it always comes in al if you input a whole string where does it come wherever you have made dx point to so define a way an array make dx point to the array and do this you will get the whole string into that array similarly to output a character if you want to output a single character put its ascii value in dl move uh, and we move ah come appropriate code 02 and 1921 it'll display that single character you want to display a whole string define the string make dx point to the string by writing lea dx comma whatever is the name that you've given for the string move ah comma the code is 09 int 21 ish now that character will be the whole string will be displayed put 10 and 13 before or after wherever you want to so that you get that line ideally before so it will start at the next line and if you want to leave a line after that then put it after also so whatever the user will enter will come leaving one line after that so it'll just give a more spaced out look on the screen Lastly, to terminate the program, this is the exit code, also called as the exit code. You come out of the DOS system back to your own system. Move AH comma 4C, move AL comma 00. Basically, the code is 4C. Z move AL, I'll tell you why it's required. This is just an extra thing. Even if you don't do this, if you do that, it's fine. This is done as an error code. The number that you keep over here, if you keep 00, zero that means the program returned without an error. If you keep 01, 02, 03, you can have your own defined conditions. If 01 came, that means there was so and so error in the program. 02 came, so and so error in the program. Like for example, you tell the, you are writing a program to add two numbers. You tell the user enter the first number and the user like a fool is entering alphabets like Z or something. Then you will terminate the program and put an appropriate code over here so that you can display the message invalid entry by the user or etc whatever so if you keep this zero that means the program ran error free if you keep any number over here that means there was some error so this is just used to indicate whether there was an error or not and the actual termination line is this move ah comma 4c int 21 that will terminate the program come get out of dos so basically it's the exit screen or the exit code okay those are the functions of int 21 i hope you understood it